everyone, and welcome to Throw Like a Girl Radio, Brooklyn College Radio's first all-female sports talk show. Today is Wednesday, December 2nd. I'm Melissa Palacelli. And I'm Carrie and Galanti. Thank you for tuning in to Throw Like a Girl Radio. You can listen to us in a number of different ways. First, by streaming off of mywbcr.com or downloading the TuneIn Radio app and searching Brooklyn College Radio. Make sure you're following us on all of our social media accounts, facebook.com slash throwlikeagirlradio, twitter at throwlike a underscore girl, Facebook, I mean, sorry, Instagram, Throw Like a Girl Radio, all one word, and subscribe to our YouTube and iTunes podcast by searching Throw Like a Girl Radio. We hope you guys all had a Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving, Kara? I'm so full from Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm, I don't know how this is possible, but I really haven't been eating a lot lately because lately of Thanksgiving. How about you? How was your it's break? It was okay. It wasn't that great just because the Rangers played horribly. And know, they had their Thanksgiving showdown on the Friday after. I love Friday matinee games. I know, I me off. too. But they no, they're, they, it's but been horrible. But we'll, we'll get to that later <laughs> on. But I went to the BU versus Cornell game over the weekend. It was college hockey, and I'm so happy BU won. But what I found interesting was they went into overtime. But if you don't score in overtime, it's done. It just ends as a tie game, which I found very interesting. I didn't know. Hockey used to be that way. The NHL used to be that way. Really? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Ago. Yeah. Well, I'm learning a lot of new things. And then they had to they went to a shootout after because they had to win this trophy because it was a red-hot hockey game, so they had to win something. And it was a pretty good shootout, and BU really came out with a win. They were behind the whole time, and it was a really good game. So, guys, check out BU Hockey. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Barclays Center has a few college hockey games coming up, Oh, they're actually. starting that now? I think so. I think I think it's – maybe it's basketball I'm thinking of. But there's some college – sport being played at Barclays Center in the near future. I have to figure I'll figure it out tonight. They'll advertise it at some point. Yeah, we'll go. <laughs> I'm down to go. I'm going to the Army-Navy game, the hockey game. I was going to say football. That, I thought that already happened. No, hockey. It's at MSJ, so I'm going to that, which is probably going to be awesome. But, yeah, so, guys, also, we forgot to mention, if you want to join in in our conversation, the number calls 718-951-4444. Call, tell us what you think, and venting about your team losing or winning or anything like that so the number again is 718-951-4444 okay so what are we gonna do we're gonna start off our show with our woman of the week and her name is Jeannie morris and we have a youtube clip of her giving advice to women who want to go into this industry so check it out we're having technical difficulties (laughs) my fault You've got to be do your homework. You've got to really, if you want to do a good job, you've got to know your stuff. And so I think that a woman who really wants to love sports, grew up with sports, and more and more played sports, which is really great, uh, that they should, uh, you know, give it their all and, and go for it because it's 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 a combination of reporting and a lot of fun. My advice would be though to be to really learn the sports you're going to cover so that you have the respect of the players and the coaches and know your stuff. So the Chicago Bears over, I think it was last, this summer actually, they did a special on her because she was a Chicago sports reporter for 24 years. 24-year career, yes. And she, in her time, obviously covered the Bears during uh, during her career. And she started in... 1967, when essentially women were non-existent. Yeah, they weren't even allowed in the press box. Yeah, and then that video we posted on our Twitter page. Yes, um, and I got on YouTube, on, on YouTube, <laughs> on our Facebook page. Today is a really bad one. It gives her a rendition of all the experiences she had, but yes. just to name a few, Ted Williams, when he was the uh, manager of the White Sox, told her to get out of the dugout, and yes. she she stood up for herself in every instance, which is really no, cool. No, she, she did, and that's what got her the respect from a lot of players and coaches, is how she stood up for herself, and she never gave up. Um, She also, I think it was during, she, when she covered the Bears. A Vikings-Bears game. You're talking about the yes, the press conference, uh, the press room she yeah, was Yeah, she wasn't in. yep. involved in the press box in the Metropolitan Stadium, and she sat on top of the press in box. In a blizzard. It was sno- Yeah, it was snowing, because no women or children were allowed. I get the children aren't allowed in the press box because they're children, but... Since women were allowed, she still covered the team. And it was it's just crazy. And also, she was married to um, a Chicago Bear, with Johnny Morris, Morris. And she was the first female to report live from a Super Bowl. But ironically enough, she was just allowed to interview the wives of the winning yeah, team. It, but she did the pregame, though. So still, she kind of covered it. was 1975, it. I believe. Yep. Yeah, she... Also, she joined journalism at the age of 32 after her husband retired, so it was pretty late in the game, too. 
Um, her husband got offered a job after he retired to cover um, a column, and he was supposed to be paid $52. But he said, well, let my wife do it. And she was just known as Mrs. Johnny Morris. That's it. Her name wasn't even given as credit for her writing. It was She always was known as Johnny Morris's wife. And she was also on the Mike Ditka show. She was the co-host, too, with her, hu- with her ex-husband because they, yeah. they aren't <laughs> together anymore. But when they were married, she co-hosted the Mike Ditka show. And they always had exchanges. Her and Mike Ditka never really saw eye to eye with what she was saying. A lot of the time she said she would challenge him with some questions yeah. and he wasn't. He said, it's my show. Like, don't ask me those questions. But she never really backed down and... You know, she still asked the tough questions, the challenging questions. Yeah. And she always pushed the boundaries. I love women like that. <laughs> Me too. She, I, I love that. And also, she was the first female winner of the Ring Lardner Award for Excellence in Journalism. And that's why they did that piece. Right, because it's a, it's a reward that's based out of Chicago for local sports coverage. So it's one of... And in the interview, she actually says that she felt kind of like she thought there were so many other women who had come before or, or yeah. who had done work in the like in the, since the time she had um, been in the field who had deserved it more than she had, which is amazing yeah. to think, but... She's. A, I, I hope to be like her one day. Yeah. Like she's really was a pioneer, and just her advice too. Just saying, you have to know your stuff in this industry, and I think it's a hundred percent correct. I feel like I've gotten this advice before too. Just if you know your stuff, you have to overcompensate for being a woman. Yeah. So when you do that, you literally give anyone, you give nobody an excuse to question your. Yeah, capability. and you get and you get respect from men, and she did, and and she's. I don't know. She's just an amazing woman, and. We'll see what happens with us in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully someone will be talking about us on their show. Yeah. As their Woman of the Week. Hopefully. <laughs> so, Jeannie Morris, congratulations. You're the Woman of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, throw like a girl since this WBCR's first all-female sports talk show with myself, Carrie Ann Galanti, and Alyssa Palacelli. We'll be right back with you after a short break. Right now, you're going to listen to the audio from when Patrick Kane extended his goal streak, not his goal streak, but his point streak, to 20 games last night. Has two assists, Panarin. This puck knocked away by Koivu. Good lift to the stick by Keith. He keeps it in beautifully for Kane. Waiting, shooting. He scores! Patrick Kane's 20th point. Game in a row with a point. All set up by the brilliance of Duncan Keith with a steal and set up. And the game is tied. Looks like the Minnesota Wild are off to the races, right? Look at this. And Duncan Keith lifts up the stick of Miko Koivu and makes this whole play. And just like the other night in L.A., for Patrick Kane to go to number 19, it's the same duo that makes Patrick Kane. Well, that goal so- song sounds familiar. I know, right? Where did, <laughs> where did <laughs> that from? I, I know, know, right? <laughs> oh, they took it from us, just saying. Yeah, exactly. So welcome back, everyone. <laughs> Throw Like a Girl Radio with Liz Palacelli and Cara Angelante is here with you until 12 p.m. So now let's let's stick to hockey. Let's focus on some hockey. Yes, big, that's our sport, girl. Big week um, for the Rangers and the Islanders, actually. Yes. Uh, tonight's the big showdown in the city yes yes isles rangers 8 p.m nbc sports network doc emmerich has coverage at, and in brooklyn for the first time yeah and eddie olchek the first game ever in brooklyn and which is great and there's mm. everyone's saying the stakes are raised because this is actually a huge homestand for the islanders to get their themselves back into you know they could they're only six games behind the rangers i believe and the rangers yes. have just been playing so horribly but they've been finding a way to win i know we just came off a three game losing streak but we won the other day i mean we beat carolina four to three i which know you, you should. shouldn't have even we should have demolished carolina not yeah. just it should never have been a close game to begin with number one but i want to say with the but with the rangers we'll see what happens they've had a pretty good record with the islanders too history wise and the islanders are on a winning streak they won three out of the last four games they have and, and we've lost. <laughs> we've lost yeah. three of our so last four games. A, hopefully, I mean, the Barclays Center attendance has been atrocious. Oh, for the it, Islanders. it has been. And I have a feeling, t- luckily I'll get to be there tonight. I'm really excited about that. Yes. But I'm interested to see how many Rangers fans are going to show up. And I would show. I think there'll be more I Rangers think, fans I than I think Islanders so, too. Fans. When they played Montreal a few weeks ago, they played them right before the Rangers did on, la- like, last week it was, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It was, like, right before. So... There were so many. But Montreal fans travel well. They're everywhere. They're oh, all no, over they're the place. always even at but games at the Garden. Even they, they played the Bruins. Insane. There was even a lot of Avalanche fans there on Monday. 
See, I find that well, it's after the Thanksgiving breaks, so probably people stay. That's true. A little people longer. are in town. Yeah, they're in town. But I heard this was gonna be like the second sold out game since the opener. The opener wasn't even so like it's. Really? I guess they were sold out. Talking with tickets, but there wise, wasn't. But it wasn't completely full. I don't know what's going on with the Islanders. I think they'll probably move back to Long Island if they're redoing Nassau Coliseum. I think this could be like a temporary home because the ring is not for hockey. A lo- I heard a lot of complaints, a lot of there's, obstructed view. There's a ton of seats that can't be used because of the obstructed view. You're and losing actu- money there. Right. And even though you're selling the tickets for the seats you can be used for higher value because at Barclay Center, they're losing a whole section because the press box... Yes. For the hockey riders, is in section two twelve, which g- gives you a pretty a decent view of the ice. But where the no- it normally is for basketball, you can't use for hockey because it's obstructed by the jumbotron, yeah. and you can't see one end of one goal. Mm-hmm. So they're losing so many seats by, and they're still not even filling up. I think they're second worst in attendance in the league behind in front of Carolina. And I think they're wow. and they're only like two, Phoenix. I know no one goes to Coyote. They're, they're two. I think they're two seats f- more full than the Florida Panthers. That says a lot. And this is a New York team too. And like last season, I know they were selling out. There and it's really easy to get to. Games and ask. I know, but who's gonna go right after work? If you work in Long Island, who's gonna go to right to straight to Brooklyn after during a weekday? I wouldn't do it if I lived in Long Island. Why would I do that? I guess so, but it's better than your team being in Kansas City. That's true, because then you wouldn't have any chances. Right. Now. But let's talk about the Rangers, because they are injury Injury. Yeah, prone. that's what I'm a little bit worried about now. They're not playing well, and they have to play through these two major injuries, Kevin Klein and Derek Stepan. Yeah, Derek Stepan is out, what is it, six to eight weeks with broken ribs. And I saw that hit on Matt Bolesky. It was during the Bruins game. He hit Derek Stepan. Derek Stepan did not prepare for that hit at yeah, all. Yeah, it was a late hit. It was but seconds you know after I the puck had left Derek Stepan's stick. But there was no suspensions the, at the all Bruins that hearing. game against the Bruins on uh, no, that, was that, was the, that was the showdown the day after Thanksgiving that was right? horrible they, it was a dirty game it was a very dirty game Claude Julian taking some hits at Lundqvist at the end and the, pro- yeah, the post game are you serious yeah. I, I, I know but you know what did you see Brandon Duminski he was suspended a game for cross checking Crosby, Crosby over the head that was pretty bad no, it w- I understand that was dead, <laughs> but why don't you suspend Matt Bolesky for that late hit on? Stepan had no control of the puck. He just gave it away. He passed it. And I think we ended up getting a penalty on that because of McElrath. Yeah, because McElrath fought, which yeah. I I think that was good that he no, stood he up for his to do teammate. That because that was I know hit. you're not a big fan of Dylan McElrath. And now no, not that I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of fighting drawing in general. P- yeah, because it draws penalties. And, like, I obviously, you have to, like, something like that has to happen without a doubt. You have to have someone stand up for You're your right. team. I agree with that. But I don't know. I just think that it's just it's losing my like, I don't know. It's his time to shine now. Him yeah. and Adam, their time to shine now. Since we have Kevin Klein's out two to three weeks. He suffered a strained oblique against the Hurricanes. So and he's been the best Rangers defenseman oh, so yeah. far. Um oh, yeah. Girardi has been demoted to I think fourth line. Fourth pair. Fourth pair has been demoted. So Oh, uh, no, actually, third depends on fair. I'm lying to you guys, but what happens if McElrath shines? Do you think Girardi will be a healthy He's scratch? He's not that fast, McElrath. He's so big. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I hope he need, does for our sake because we need youth. And the Rangers are a small team, though. We need height, and we need bigness on the team and strength just a little bit. We have Kreider, and Nash is not going to fight. Kreider's going to fight. We have Kreider and McElrath to fight. That's it. Yeah, and Kreider doesn't rarely does anyway. He's more of just... A chirper. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he definitely <Well>. is. <laughs> Let's also talk about the Islanders now because Travis Hamanick wants out. Yeah. He's, he, he wants out. Very. Uh, that's a very interesting yeah. situation because they have such a core group of defensemen that mm, really, they like, they're young guys. They could really be developed into a solid, they can really develop some depth there as far as their defensemen are go. But now that he is requesting a trade. I mean, honestly, I'm at I'm at every Islander home game. And yeah, so what do you think? You're the Islander expert. Dehan, I'm an Islander expert. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I know. that's. I'm, I had to say it. <laughs> um, Dehan is horrid. Absolutely horrible. He's he, Mr. Turnover, like, cannot mm-hmm. c- cannot clear the, def- uh, the um, defensive zone ever. Okay. And there was one time where I was actually right by the ice, and I w- they were coming off, and Hamannick was on, lo- on paired with uh, Dahan for yeah. I forget what game who they were playing against. He was livid, like hitting his stick against the wall on his way out. He was so angry, and I don't think that this request for a trade has anything to do with that. I think no personal reasons. Personal reasons. Yeah, his family's so in 
Winnipeg, I think. I know some part of Canada, and he wants to be closer to them. Yeah, which is understandable, especially if you're a young kid. Yeah. You know, he m- maybe he's getting married soon, you know, things like that all come into play. Um, but I think it's just interesting that he would want to leave something that could – I mean, this, this team has a lot of potential. No, it does. It has so. a lot of playoff potential and Stanley Cup hopes in the way future. <laughs> well, I mean, it is something in the future. I mean, there, there's a reason why Tavares signed – this long-term contract with them yeah. because he believes in the development program that they have. So yeah, so we'll see what happens with the Islanders. And also, they have a solid four lines. So they have the best fourth line in the league. Oh, without a doubt, Maddie Martz, Sizikis, and Clutterbuck. Uh, they are awesome to watch. I love watching that fourth line come out. They Maddie Martz. Okay, talking about um, being an enforcer, I think yes. he does it right. No, he's he and always he, he has these too. huge hits all the time. Yes. They're always for the yes. most part clean. So it's going to be interesting to see if him and McElrath have any um words run into each other at all no, tonight. They'll, they'll fight. That'll be they'll fight tonight. But I like how Martin he scores too. He scores goals. Yes. McElrath is not all offensive. They're based the, as other you know Well he's also a defenseman, so I know, but that's true, but I like, you know, just shoot the puck sometimes. <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen. But you know what frustrated me during the Carolina Hurricanes game was the Rangers when they have odd man rushes when there's a two on one they always decide what to do too late, and they never take advantage of that opportunity. There was one with Kevin Hayes the other night, and r- the Rangers always pass, and they're always a generous team, but stop always thinking pass, 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 and then last minute, oh, I don't have the pass. Let me just shoot it, and you just waste an opportunity. Just shoot the puck, and if there's deflection, the other man will get it on the other side. I've just been really worried. I mean, the Rangers have had gone off to a great start, but they're just in their past couple of games, there's just been so many things that – there's serious flaws in this roster as far as I don't know if it's just them being lazy or or what it is but yes on Saturday I was at the game against the Flyers the worst hockey game I've probably ever watched in live in person and I'm one of those big people I'm always like people who say they don't like hockey I'm like you're crazy like there's never a boring game just kidding this was a boring <laughs> game like it was ho- horrible 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 they couldn't they're uh, when they're going into the offensive zone there was always two on five uh, two on five every single time I don't know how that happened but it was and they never had anyone in front of the net. Always finding people behind the net, but there's nobody to pass. There's no one at the point. Like they're just they're all over the place. They they oh. need to find some type of groove here, and hopefully it starts tonight. Well, I really like that Zook Brass and Nash line. Yes, that's my favorite because they're the only one has been producing. Zook has been producing. Oscar Lindbergh, that that rookie, that kid, he's gonna be something in the future. We gotta get so. that contract. Hope it's not first year luck, but we'll see. I know we don't. We have to see what happens because the sophomore slump is something that's really. Happens it's in a the huge NHL. thing in the NHL. Michael it's Delzato. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. That's not even t- <laughs> Why do you even mention his name in this conversation? Because, like, it's true. I can't stand Delzato. I don't have fun. But should we talk about Patrick Kane just a little bit? Sure. Do we have a little bit of time? We do. We do have a couple minutes. All right. So I prepped for just his, him to ending the streak last night. I didn't think it was going to go a 20-game <laughs> point streak. But he extended it last night, and he was the NHL's first star in the month of November, and he was the first American to do so, apparently. Yeah, his first, the longest streak for an American-born player. Yeah, so congratulations to him. He's yeah, a what, a, what a turnaround from what everyone thought this season was going to entail for him. They didn't even think he was going to be able to compete, but here he is. <laughs> oh, here he is. He's proving <laughs> people wrong, yep. but he's really taking the drama off the ice. Off the ice, literally. Yeah. Um. During the month of Decem- December, we're in December, <laughs> November, he had 15 assists and 23 points. Um, the last player to have a 20-game point streak was Sidney Crosby in 2010. So this hasn't happened in five and years. The, the longest streak ever is Wayne Gretzky, oh, 51 oh, games, please. which is untouchable. That's untouchable. Yeah, he's, he's just... I read something one day that him. said that if you were to look at his stats and you would take away, I think it was his goals he would still lead the league by a significant margin in points just based off of how many assists he had there was like you could take away either his goals or assists mm-hmm. and he would still be so much further ahead than anybody else in most points ever i'm not surprised isn't that insane no he's the best player insane well arguably the best player to ever play hockey but no, no, a lot no. of, there's a the lot of, best player there's a lot oh, there's some critics out there too there's always critics i know there is so that's why i'm gonna say arguably <laughs> And also, guys, NHL All Star. This is very interesting. Voting has opened very last night. Last for night captains, or yesterday? Right? Yeah, for captains, and I think just for players in general. I know the fan vote has opened, but we're talking about the format this year. I don't know if I'm crazy about this. I'm never. I don't really. The only All Star game I ever really watch mm-hmm. is baseball, just because. Yes. I really. I and honestly, I only really watch the 
the home run derby because i think that's just like so yeah fun. me too with the nhl i always watch the skills competition but i don't think we should call it a game anymore i think it's the nhl all-star tournament right because they're doing a three game three on three tournament each game is 20 minutes long and the winner gets one million dollars the winning team this is very uh, it's all very strange to me it they're trying is. to just like revamp the hype around the nhl all-star game mm-hmm. but i don't know if i like this i mean i don't each like team, it. there's four teams for yes. pacific central atlantic and metro division each representing that i kind of like the whole mock draft fantasy draft type of deal or deal they have last year yeah i love i was I just gonna say i that love the draft because you got to know the players too also on a personal level right and i mean and it was fun and you saw yeah, their it personalities was fun. and it was fun it was fun it was funny at the same time and commissioner bill da- daly said that he wanted to enhance the competitiveness of the event but i think with three on three hockey number one you're taking away checks you're taking away checking i mean there really hitting. there really isn't any of that in the all-star game to begin with because these guys aren't trying to get hurt they're just trying to have yeah, fun so there's just gonna be so much ice and just passing too i love three on three overtime like that's what i'm for but i think we're taking it too far with the three on three format of an all-star game right the players are gonna be exhausted it's 11 players it's, each team will be made up of 11 players so i think it's more people are going to be in the all-star game this year than in past seasons i don't think 44 players made up the all-star game last year Hmm. Maybe give or Close take. to it. I really? Would say, yeah. I don't think there was that much. Maybe it's just my math is off lately. <laughs> but the one million dollar prize, everyone on the team gets a cut of it, which I think it's good that there's an incentive to win. But because I think they just worry because last year's All Star game was like the score was something like nine, like the eleven. Like the, the, there's like an insane amount of goals because no one's playing. There's still gonna be an defense, insane amount of goals. Really. <laughs> I feel bad for the goalies in the end because you know how much how many shots right they're gonna be taking and trying to. Defend? I think they're just trying to play off the popularity that they have received from the three on three overtime. Well, you don't have an All Star game in Nashville. If you want people to come, <laughs> that's true. I guess well, honestly, but they're trying the to grow these smaller markets. I know it's first time in Nashville, but you don't have a game in Nashville. But there's going to be captains of each team, and there's not going to be a draft, which really does. Um, I think I think not having a draft is really unfortunate because, I, like I said, I think it does allow for the players' personalities to shine through, which I don't think the NHL does a good enough job no, of portraying to the fans. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. The NHL has always changed the format of the game. They changed it for years, and this is so many times they've been changing the format but maybe this would work i don't know but i'll watch the game just to see what happens exactly i think people are going to watch us out of pure interest to see how it's going to work whether they'll stay tuned in or not that's a whole other story yeah that's the real question well throw like a girl radio which is the bbcr's first all-female sports talk show hold on Wait, what happened? Rangers have recalled forward Tanner Glass no! from Wolfpack just now. That's just like the worst news <laughs> Sorry, I've ever heard today. Sorry, I just saw it popped up, and I, I, well, I knew that it would get a reaction out of Kara, so oh I had to say it. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? The only thing he's good for, he just fights, and it's like, you that fight. Does that mean that Mickelrath is not going to get as much time? Don't you dare. <laughs> Mickelrath is young. At least, don't put Tanner Glass on the ice. He's dead weight. His first, he scored like one goal last season, and it took him <laughs> over 500 games to do so. You're welcome, listeners. This is what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alyssa, now you're going to sign off the segment. because <laughs> We'll be going to come right back and talk some NWHL highlights. For now, you can listen to Katie Nolan's garbage time piece when she went to try out for the New York Riveters, our local team here in Brooklyn. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Attack, attack. Do you need to see my ID? I got... The National Women's Hockey League. Olympians, gold medalists, college national champions, paid professionals. I played youth hockey, so I thought I knew what I was doing, but I got my work cut out for me. You the new girl? Hey. Coach Chad. Oh, hey, Coach. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You gonna mix a workout in with the girls? I'm gonna just probably hang out and not do this. So these women are tough. They work their asses off. Maybe I should give this exercise thing a try. Oh, we're good. Oh, oh, so tired. So much work there. Ooh, sweating, but looking good. The girls are getting dressed, so I guess it's time to suit up. But I had to borrow the pads of the woman who started it all. Danny Ryland, commissioner of the NWHL. Commissioner, how did you do it? The players were so good that they couldn't be ignored anymore, and women's sports have never been hotter, so it actually didn't take too much convincing to, to get people on board. I could be drafted into the NWHL. I think. You may be out of your prime. What? Am I too old? Women peak athletically when they're 27 years old. I peaked athletically when I was 12. 
And that was the last time I skated, too. There's a lot for me to relearn. Probably should start by remembering how to skate. Remembering it's considered a penalty. Jesus! And how to fight. No, what? 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 Or, or lose a fight. How do you stop? Like this? Oh, okay. You make it look easy, but I can't do that. Okay, so obviously hockey, not my thing, but they let me have a shot on goal. What's happening? What's happening? segment from Garbage Time um, with Katie Nolan, and we're back. If you guys want to call in, the number to call is 718-951-4444. The number again is 718-951-4444. Now let's talk about some NWHL highlights from the weekend. I, we actually didn't go to the game this weekend. The first time yeah. in three weeks. It's, t- <laughs> it's two weeks before finals, so the presses are really giving us a lot of work. Um, so the New York Riveters fall to the Boston Buttes 3-1, to one, and the Boston Buttes Got their first Buffalo Buttes. Why am I saying Boston Buttes? <laughs> They're both B. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Buffalo Buttes got their first win of the season. So finally. now everybody has a win in the league. Yes. All four teams are now yes. in the win column in some way or form, shape or form. But the Riveters, for s- they snapped their two-game winning streak. If we would have won this game, we would have been 500. But we're not. But that's fine. Um, Devon Skeets was named the player of the week. Um, she scored twice during the game and gave which gave the Buttes their first win of the season. Um, I think Skeets is Fujimoto's weakness. Finally, she found one. <laughs> I, I think it's like, you know, how like, Gabrick and Lumquist have their little thing? I think it'll be Skeets <laughs> and Fujimoto because it, it was it was a great game. Fujimoto was on our A game, but she got taken out in the third period. So how did you watch the game, Kara? I watched well. <laughs> thanks for asking, Alyssa. Well, if you guys go to nwhl.co and you click the streaming bar you could they stream it off of youtube and the quality isn't that great because it's aviator sports center so they don't really have there it's not set up for broadcast yeah they don't have the technology and stuff but it was a pretty good game the announcing was pretty good too i have to give i don't know the guy's name but i had to give him credit but what i think the weakness of the broadcast is that they don't have something going on during the intermission it's like 15 minutes of just like it'll be back in 15 minutes. There's a right. 15, like it just says that. And I think that's the weakness because I want to hear what people have to say in analyzing game and what's going on. And you really have to analyze it yourself too, which is also good for us as trying to learn and, you know, future broadcasters right. in the making. But when Fujimoto left the game, the third period, we didn't know what was going on. There was, it was just because of a collision. She's not really injured. And Jenny Scrivens made her debut who is Ben Scrivens' wife from the Edmonton Oilers, who's also a goalie, and she made her debut, too, during the game. Very. She's been really cool with us, too. She's also doubles as a member of the PR team, and yeah. she hooked us up with our credential, and mm-hmm. she did an interview for us. So Yeah, she's, she's, a, she's really cool, and she's a really good goalie, too. And she's she really very well-spoken. No, she is. Very well-spoken. She is. Uh, she's, she's good for PR for the team. But, you know, the Riveters ma- took too many penalties. They had over six penalties in the game but I, I i don't i don't know what else to say it was it was, it was <laughs> all right they outshot the buttes 36 to 28 so it was just so the other uh matchup for this weekend was yes. whale pride whale is still undefeated yes. which is they're the only team so now there's one undefeated team and just like the nfl <laughs> <laughs> <The> and <laughs> and um one team that has one win the buttes right Yes, you're right. And everyone and else kind of falls in the middle. But the whale, what's with the whale, they're, they're struggling a little bit because to hold on to leads. Because this happened last game, too. They were leading. They start off strong. In the middle of the game, they get a little bit weak, and they, they just lose it, and they give up some goals. And then they finish off strong with the shootout, or they go into overtime. But 
it reflects their record because they're undefeated, but they just have to keep the but lead. But they're not clean wins. They're not. They're not. They're they're really not clean wins at the end of it. But the whale we saw the whale versus the riveters, and the whale is a big, strong team mm-hmm. too. They're quick. They're very quick. So I think they're the ones to beat for the Isabel Cup this year. Isabel Cup. Isabel to be played for in March. Yeah. So I think they're the ones to beat. They're they have a great team. All teams have Olympians on it, but I think this team is something that they're just a big, strong team. And guys, g- come to games and check it out. Yeah, for sure. Right here in Brooklyn. Yeah. Kind of a pain to get to, Aviator Sports, but... It, it's worth it, honestly. It really is. And these women really do play hockey really well. And also, they made a big announcement because the NWHL partnered with ESPN3. Awesome. Yeah, they're going to be streaming games online. Um, And this is actually really monumental for the league because ESPN is such a big sports platform. Yeah, so it's hopefully another step. They just signed with New England Sports Network to have their games um, streamed off of there. Yes. With the, the Boston games only. That's a bo- I think because but Hillary Knight has a lot to do with it, too, because she's the face of women's hockey. Yeah. And I think she has a lot to do And just hockey in general in New England is much bigger than it is in pretty much all the other markets. You know what I mean? That That's has true. the most audience, especially for women's hockey. The, it's one of the big hotspots for women's ice hockey, so I think that that has a lot to do with it as well. But he, it's really good that they keep getting – Making yeah. these deals, it's just... And it's starting their first season, too. Like, that's right, what we have to right. emphasize. It's their inaugural season, and people are just going with it. And they're getting a lot of views because over 1,700 people watch the YouTube broadcast. Because they have Which an awesome. viewing. Right, yeah. So they have fans, and the sport is just only growing. And it's an in- international because all these players, you know, Fujimoto and Janine Weber, she's from Austria. Yeah. Fujimoto's from Japan. And, you know, they have family and friends back there who are also viewing, and it's hopefully just growing the game globally. Yeah, it is. And also press has been there, too, yeah. from various countries. And just check check out the games. Watch it streaming, and that's it. Well, we're ending our NWHL segment, aren't we? We are. We don't have <laughs> a lot of time left here. We're rushing through this. So we are, again, the first all female sports radio sports talk show. I'm Carrie Ann, and that's Alyssa Palicelli. <laughs> we will be back shortly. We're going to review... What are we doing right now? Sunday night football highlights because everyone's talking about the Patriots being beaten by Brock Osweiler. So we shall discuss when we come back. (laughs) Welcome, baby. We're going against one of the best teams in the league. We're going against one of the best teams in the league. Brady takes the step. He looks left. He throws left for Gronkowski. Makes the grab. Runs away from the defender. Slips another hit by Ford. Across the five. Into the end zone. This is a great catch of great run. High in the air and leaping to intercept for the Patriots at the 15-yard line. Jones. Chandler Jones caught it. Lobs to throw right corner for Chandler. Touchdown, Patriots. Still in his feet inside the 10. Inside the 5. Touchdown, Denver. He throws a lob down the right side. Fort Bolden runs under with a grab. Right sideline has the first down and more off a tackle. He's going to score a touchdown. Into the end zone. A lot of time, boys. He fields at the 45. He fumbled. The ball is loose, and the Broncos have the first shot to recover, and Denver got it. CJ to the 10. CJ to the 5. Denver touchdown. And the Broncos have drawn within 21 to 17 with 6.08 to go in the fourth quarter. Ball thrown behind Gronkowski and incomplete. Gronkowski may be hurt in the plays. Darian Stewart got a pretty good shot at him. Osweiler to Caldwell. He beat Logan Ryan. And this place is a madhouse. Looking for the tie in the final second. Snap of the spot. He drives the kick. Headed to the uprights. And the kick is good. We are now going to be headed into overtime. Bounces around. He is grabbed by Malik Jackson. Hit by Von Miller. And sat inside the 15-yard line at the 13. CJ's on the loose. CJ with one to beat. Down the sideline. CJ Anderson to the house. Denver wins it. 48-yard scamper in overtime. So Like a Girl Radio, WBCR's first all-female sports talk show, is back with you for the next 25-ish minutes. So we're going to talk some football right now. Just listening to that clip, I mean, the NFL yes. just does a great job with marketing. Oh, I cannot I know, get over how, how well they do that. So Sunday night, Broncos, Patriots. Yes. You know, there was only two teams that were undefeated coming into Sunday night's game, the Panthers and the Patriots. And the whole big talk was that Peyton Manning wasn't playing because mm-hmm. he's hurt. It was Brock Osweiler the guy to get the job done, and yes, he was. And I he just did. 
it was Tom Brady is just so good. They lo- even though they lost thirty to twenty four, there was a lot of questionable calls, but you yeah. know, honestly, the Patriots you always guys you guys get so many calls all the time. So I know that's true, and I hate when people do. I mean, football there's just been awful officiating this season, so. There's that to do with it as well. Karma comes back around. But I thought that the most interesting part of this whole game was that Oswald changed the final play. Of yeah, the game. I was I was reading that. Right. So he ca- he changed the play that won the game for them, which yeah. is a sign of a really mature quarterback. No, it, it's a second game ever in the playing in the NFL, right. and he's two zero, and you really can't ask for much more from him as if I you're a Broncos guess. fan. No, and I heard the coaches gave him two plays to one and to choose which one. He didn't go with either of them because he saw something was going on right. with the defense. And they, this is the same play that actually scored them a touchdown in, in a in a previous quarter. So, so it worked. Really good looking out for that. Um. I also think that the snow had something to do with it. He is from Montana, so yes. don't you love when it snows, do- <laughs> though? Dorn's I do. It's games? fun to watch, and everyone was like, "The only reason why this is even close is because it's snowing." But Tom Brady has a lot of games in the snow. I know Fox Pro isn't any place warm. I was so just <laughs> saying that. Like, oh, people need to check the weather. But it, do you think there's a quarterback controversy brewing for the Denver Broncos? I do think so. I think that if Manning and uh, Osweiler are both healthy, he's Osweiler's got to be the quarterback. It's the he enables the mm-hmm. Broncos to run the ball, which yes. Peyton Manning cannot do as well. So with that ability, they're going to need to run the ball and coming in, come to, coming into January, playing mm-hmm. in the playoffs, and he enables them to do that. So I think that yeah. there will be somewhat of a controversy, but I think you got to go with the younger guy. I think he's benefited significantly for sitting behind Peyton Manning. No, he has. Peyton three Manning and a half has seasons. been his backbone through this whole thing and just – Right, supporter too. It's it's not like he's just been jealous and you know not really caring, but he's guided him through this whole process. He's been in the organization for four years. Right, and I really kind of wish that there was a dual screen, mm-hmm. so you could see Peyton Manning's reaction because yeah, it's kind of I think everyone's kind of realized like I think his days are over. They're coming to a close, and he's no, had a good are. run. And it's it's almost it's sad, but at the same time, he's still a team player. You still want your team to do well, so should be. Yeah. I would have been interesting to see how his reaction was. You yeah, know? me too. And he's a veteran in the league too, so he knows how this is going to play out and what's going to happen in the future. And it's good. He's 25 years old, Brock Eisweiler. And you got to thank John Elway for drafting him in 2012. <laughs> like exactly. He was the person to like really push in, and he was drafted in the second round. A lot of people are even comparing his start to the same way that this is all probably just everyone jumping the gun a little bit. I but know, The same really. way that Tom Brady started his career. Similar circumstances. Well, they're so just jumping a gun because what yeah, happens Sunday. Exactly, exactly. Honestly. It's just a good storyline, so people are talking no, about it's it. Something, <laughs> it's something to write about, too. But also, Patriots, they blew a 14-point league, too. And everyone was saying, you know, there's a lot of injuries. Yes, also, their injuries but, strife and too. Yeah, but at the same time, so were the Broncos. So I think people are just trying to find ways to justify why the Patriots lost. And yeah. can you just give credit where credit's due? I don't know. I know. It, it just, it's They just lost one game. It's not the end of the world, too, but it's good that – at least you lost to the Broncos, and it wasn't a competitive game. It wasn't like they just gave it away to somebody. Right. You know, you know. And when it's overtime, and football overtime is just the worst. I it gets me nervous. The only thing is, like, I don't like how the first, like, you have to. You, there's only if you get a hot take, you win the game. Like, there's no, you never give the other team a chance to. Oh, that's also true. Score, which first is annoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think that there should be, if both teams should get a shot. If you can't, you know. But then the game's going to – it's a, such a physical That's true. sport, right. and the game might go on for another – But they had to figure out something else because just, like, getting a hot take is – because there's no way that – if Tom Brady's getting that ball back, he's going to score. There's no way he's not scoring. You know what I mean? That's like true. He, he got this team to overtime even That's though – I don't know. He's just too good to not let that happen. Yeah, but ju- I don't know. How they would they change it then? I don't know. Right? I, I, honestly, that's the way that makes the most sense, but yeah. – Almost they like have a to kick do something. off or something. <laughs> <laughs> Start at the ten yard line and go back. <laughs> the version of a shootout for football. Maybe that could be yeah the big change. But it, it was just a great game. A lot of people are complaining about the officiating and how it was how it was a conspiracy against the Patriots. It's always a conspiracy like against the Patriots. <laughs> There's always something against the Patriots. The Patriots need to get out of that controversy limelight and just focus on yeah. the game for once, maybe. One quick before we move on to Kara's rant about the Cowboys. Oh, yeah, just a little um, When Gronkowski got hurt, you know, Boston sports fans, they are, there's nobody else like them. And, you know, I appreciate them for their sense of humor. And, yes. you know, they're a little bit aggressive sometimes. But 
They did a hashtag pray for Gronk. He's going to be fine. Oh, he's, he's not, week to week. Okay, which is fine. It's wor- Okay, but at the same time, you have yeah. a hashtag on Twitter. Do you know how many issues are going on in the world right now? Do we really need a pray <laughs> for Gronk hashtag? Like, are you kidding me? There are oh so God. many problems going on right now. and People we d- are too funny, though, honestly. Like, please get over yourselves. Come on. It's just week to week. He could be back next week. I know. We know. I know. Like, obviously, it looked bad. He looked like he was in a lot of pain on that field. Yeah. But, but when you fall on your knee, when you hurt your knee, it's going to be especially painful. Especially him. He's, like, injury prone to begin with. Yeah, so. so just don't worry about it, Patriots fans. You will Go. make it to the Super Bowl this Cowboys. year. Cowboys. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Bleacher Report gave me this notification yesterday that got me so aggravated because – the Cowboys will reportedly put Romo on day-to-day basis. Like, they won't put him on injury reserve just in case they make the playoffs. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cowboys are not making the playoffs <laughs> this year. <laughs> there must be a, The Giants must have, like, this total downfall for the Cowboys to make the playoffs this year. And what's frustrating is that Tony Romo has been injury prone, and he's had a broken um, clavicle and collarbone before and all this stuff is going on with him so Alyssa said for him to drink milk yeah because there's no way this guy should be breaking this many bones which, like, which is great I don't know, put him on an IV of calcium yes. or something I don't I, know it's, it's, it's insane and Jerry Jones went on WFAN saying how uh Tony Roma has four to five years left to play I'm like just this this season it's done just be horrible lose all the games to get a first round draft pick and then draft a QB that's what the Cowboys need to do end of story Jerry <laughs> there you go. Kara has got her filling of Cowboys talk. Just you mentioned the Giants, and I forgot to say before yes, this week is full of New York sports rivalry Giants games tonight. Jets, right? Giants Jets Sunday, Knicks Nets Friday, and tonight the Rangers Islanders. So New York so sports fans, what are we going to do, Alyssa? No, we got a lot to talk about next Wednesday. Oh, so be I think exciting, it, and possibly our last show, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, it'll be very emotional. So for now we're going to segue into the NBA, which again, second week in a row—well, not second week in a row, but second show in a row that we're talking about the NBA. Oh my God! I know this is, this Sam's is, probably yeah, so excited. So excited. <laughs> Um, gotta talk about the Warriors. Now you know, barely beating the Utah Jazz on Monday night. Yeah, it was Monday night. You got it. And so they're gonna lose eventually because you can't go the whole season without being undefeated. It's not. It's not football. There's not 16 I games. Know. Like there's a, there's what is it? 80 something games. I have in a basketball. prediction. Same thing. It's gonna be a team that you don't think is gonna. It's gonna be f- like some like crappy it, oh, like, team. It's that's gonna, gonna be a fluky run- game. Right. It's gonna be probably the Nets. Like <laughs> that's gonna be the Nets NBA Finals, the game against the Warriors when they beat them. But Watch. something interesting that I, I wanted to get yes. your opinion on this Tell because me. ESPN Zach Lowe had rep- he's a I'm pretty sure he's a beat reporter for the Knicks, but he had he had put it into one of his articles that the executive front offices for all NBA teams or from a lot of them are rumored to be thinking about the future of their franchises. Once the uh, Warriors dominant period is over, because they realize that this this team has Steph Curry, Clay, uh, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green all locked in until 2017. So this team is going to be dominant for some time. That doesn't mean so anything, now though. that now the, the front offices are thinking, OK, let, let's try and accumulate some draft picks so that they can be good for when the Warriors are no longer the best, which is bizarre to me, because that's when you really realize how much of a business this this the sports are. Yeah. Because I've never heard that before, that other teams in the league knowingly admitting and realizing that there is no chance that they're going to beat a team, so they're going to play in their future draft picks and their future mm-hmm. formulation of their team. And that means for like some teams that have these big-name players that are trying to you know, keep them for longer or keep them for after the time, you know, yes. sign these free agents for when the Warriors are no longer dominant. So I don't know. I just think that's really – I don't, again, this is reportedly, so it's not confirmed. Teams probably think about this, but they just don't bring it to light, honestly. I think he's the first guy who probably brought it to light. But I think that's insane. I would never prep, let's prep my team to one. Right, I just thought it was over. really interesting. Very interesting that is, that is, approach. That is interesting. I, I, you know, but you don't know what's going to happen, because with basketball, there's injuries. You that's don't know, you, right. can't predict the, you can't predict the future with these players. God forbid, you don't know what's going to happen in the future, and this could be like a little fluky thing. And I wonder, you don't know. after 2017, when these guys, these big three become free agents, if they're going to end up following the Spurs model of convincing these guys to take a pay cut to remain on this all-star roster mm-hmm. to stay good for a very long period of time. And also, you got to keep their ages. In right. I mean, I the Spurs have be right got now. these guys for so long, and they're still producing. They mm-hmm. had a championship a few weeks, uh, a few weeks ago, <laughs> a few years ago. So, yeah. like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to how to comment on that remark, though. Isn't that? I just thought it was really interesting to bit of information to think about. Get back to me, twenty seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait two years. For Second that. biggest news coming out of the NBA this week. 
Kobe Bryant. Kobe has Bryant's retiring. Finally. I don't. I'm like he came to terms. This with might it. just be because I'm not a big basketball person, but he doesn't do it for me. I love his competitive nature. I love all the yes. quotes I read about him. I love all the stories I hear of him being in the gym at 4 a.m. calling up Coach K to be like, "Hey, what's wrong with my jump shot or whatnot?" Yes. But just his past, his you know, his personal mark, life and his professional life have left a mark on me, and that's just how it is. And I'm sure there is for a lot of people, but. People who appreciate basketball and who are big Lakers fans, like, he's the guy. He is the next Michael Jordan, as far as a lot of people are concerned. Yeah. Did you see Shaq's Instagram post? No, I didn't. Oh, my God. I love Shaq. Who doesn't love Shaq? Uh, he guy who can't shoot a free throw. <laughs> 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 he's Honestly. also a ring chaser and never gets criticized for it, but whatever. It's fine. We don't, we don't he just posted <laughs> a really funny, like, um, video of uh, photoshopped his face over, and his face and Kobe Bryant's face over, like, some, like, dancing people, and I thought it was funny. That he's, like, <laughs> he's, like the, the post-retirement plan for Kobe Bryant or something. I thought it was cute. Yeah, dancing that. with the stars. That's his yeah. next thing. Exactly. <laughs> he's, after he retires, actually, he'll still be contention to play in Rio for the Olympics. So I think that might be his, like, official like goodbye. Official Just close winning, the game. winning gold medal for U.S. And that would be ending on high because the Lakers are not even going to the playoffs this season. Yeah. It's just going to be Kobe's last goodbye. And it's now it's like, who's next to take the torch? I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, he helped the Lakers win five championships in his 20-year career, which is pretty great he's a two-time olympic gold medalist um 17 all-star selections an 81 point game that ranks the second best in nba history which i can't even score that many points in the game <laughs> and more than thirty-two thousand points third all-time in nba scoring i think he's behind kareem abdul jabbar and Mal- uh carl Ooh, look at you look carl at you Malone. flashing some basketball knowledge right I'm trying. now i'm so <laughs> proud I, I, I have no idea <laughs> i know kareem is like the top in everything <laughs> But the second one, I think, was Carl Malone. So he's third because he just passed it like a couple of days ago. Didn't he? I Your guess is as good as mine. I know he passed <laughs> it. And they made a big deal. But it's at the end of his two-year $25 million contract. So it's the right time. He's not going to fight for another contract. And, yeah, great job, Kobe Bryant. Now, great quickly, career. before we have to sign off. Oh, no, we have three minutes. I know. We got to talk about David Price. Oh, oh, go for it. Start so it. last night, monstrous, monstrous contract. David Price signed seven-year, $217 million, the most ever for a starting pitcher as he signed with the Boston Red Sox. I was actually in Rite Aid when I got the notification, and there was a guy in there with the Boston hat. I wanted to be like, hey, did you hear what happened? But I didn't. Oh, uh, you should have. <laughs> but I just think this is really int- – the biggest part that I'm like, oh, my God, Price and Ortiz on the same team. I don't know if anyone remembers, but game two of ALDS in 2013, I believe. Mm-hmm. You know, because Price isn't that great. They gave him all this money, and he's has a horrible playoff record. They're desperate. I mean, they in the end of it, they're desperate. I think that they're just trying to really revamp their pitching staff because it was one of the worst in the game last season. Yes, it was. So, so continue. What happened with the story? Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Price gave up seven runs on nine hits, two of which were David Ortiz home runs, and on the second one, it was close to being a foul ball. And instead of just like running it out, Ortiz stood at the plate and watched it. You know become like go over the fence so price took offense to that and the next time he was at fenway and he started it was may of 2014 he yes. drilled ortiz in the back with the fastball so well it's ortiz's last it is his last season, season. so he's and not gonna start controversy no i know it's not but it's just it will be interesting dynamic to play like out how they, well yeah. at least he's happy they're on the same team and he's not against them i guess anymore so. so he doesn't have to worry about that and also this this also makes it uh the highest paid Ever players for- um they're actually tied with miguel cabrera with 31 million dollars per year he's per year, making. Yeah. but for a starting picture pitcher is the first time yeah, i don't even why he, did they give him like they're desperate i don't Boston, know because in the end he has thrown almost three thirteen one inning one inning away from 1300 innings over yeah. the last six seasons the fourth most in baseball he has not been on the disabled list in twi- since 2013 he's okay. missed 17 days in his career uh with the tricep strain so he had he's kind of like on on schedule for an injury of some kind at some point soon but <laughs> he's on he's on course for tommy john surgery and just the in the playoffs he is not great no he's he, horrible two and seven with a 5.112 era and 14 career playoff games the Rays, tigers and the blue jays are one and seven with him in playoff when in the playoff game when he started that's not good no that's uh, if if the red sox want to make a run for the playoffs you don't sign a pitcher to this blockbuster deal Who's not I mean, consistent in the playoffs? I know um, it's a different team too, but the guy who signed him—he's the president of baseball operations, Dave 
uh, Dombrowski. He used to be on the Tigers, was fired for them after they kind of made those changes. They got rid of Cespedes. They got rid of Price um, during when they fell out of playoff contention. He's known for making these big deals, and he was hired by Boston after uh, shortly after he was let go from Detroit. And he, uh, you know, he signed uh, Kim- Kimbrell on the 13th. So he's just trying to make this this pitching staff one to reckon with, and he's doing a good job. The last time that they had a pitcher of the caliber that prices was with Lester in 2010 so mm-hmm. they have they're just trying to change it up a bit and I think that it'll work out for them well I'm just <laughs> glad it's not the Yankees <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm glad it's not the Yankees too uh, it, it, it's good well good luck with Boston next season just beat the Yankees that's all you gotta do and <laughs> get back on top of that division please that's all I'm gonna say well it's 11 51 we gotta Time sign to off, don't we? So it might be our second to last show, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening. Another week of Throw Like a Girl Radio comes to a close. We hope you guys enjoyed tuning in for th- um for this past hour. As always, thank you so much again. As uh, I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> Make sure you I'm follow us on right on social media, Throw Like a Girl, um on Facebook, Throw Like a Underscore Girl on Twitter, Throw Like a Girl Radio on Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube and iTunes podcast by searching Throw Like a Girl Radio. Yes, I'm Karen Galanti. And I'm Alyssa Palicelli. And we'll be back same time, same place next week, 11 to 12 on Wednesdays. And today at 4, our intern from last semester, Samantha Rodriguez, is hosting her new show. She's mic'd up. Show a girl some love and tune in. She'll be talking basketball. I'm sure she's talking Kobe Bryant. She's probably going to read the poem that (laughs) his PR people wrote for him. Um, (laughs) And, yeah, I hope all of you guys have a great week. And a great holiday season.